How's filming going, Steve? Well, Candy is a natural. And that new girl, she's insatiable. She went through half the cast and crew before I even took a light reading. Anyway, hey, tomorrow we're going on location to shoot the boat scenes. Boat scenes? What boat scenes? The fishermen are in the throes of passion when the giant shark comes in. What'd I say about the giant shark? <sighs> I said, no giant shark, all right? Just keep the cameras pointed at the poon tag. Okay, okay. Hey, Tommy, you guys got to try, right? Get those flyers printed up. Yeah, but nobody's gonna let us distribute those things. I mean, they're just too, uh, they're unimaginative. You don't worry about that. I've got my own ideas for distribution. Okay. Hey, Candy, uh, in my trailer. So this mission really doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it, and maybe this is an idea that's best left on paper, then it would be in action, but I feel like Rockstar could have done a lot more with these characters than what we have here, and what we're going to have in future film studio asset missions, because it seems like all of these cutscenes play out the same exact way. You have Steve showcasing his intense infatuation with this shark being involved in one of his films, and then Tommy walks in and begins berating Steve and putting down the shark idea, all while Mercedes and or Candy are doing porn star type things in the background, and that's your formula. There's very little deviation from that, and it leads to mildly interesting missions when you could have even greater missions than what we're doing. And what we're doing is using the seaplane to, um, by the looks of things, produce fecal matter all along by City West. And what you're really doing is just pooping out advertisements for Steve's new film. And the way it works is that you fly through a blue checkpoint to begin the process of distribution, and you fly through a red one to end the process. So you have a few of these duos of checkpoints across the entire island that you need to fly through before you run out of fuel, which it's very difficult to run out of fuel. This isn't like supply lines type of fuel that you have, uh, which came in San Andreas. This is a pretty lenient amount of fuel that you have here, so it really leads to no challenge whatsoever. And the appeal of this mission, I think, is that not only is it fairly easy, except for one checkpoint in particular that I can think of, which is awkwardly located in between two very tall buildings, but the appeal is that this mission is very peaceful, it's tranquil, and there's not a whole lot of violence or action going on, except for the flying part. So, once you get past that initial appeal, this mission is basically just filler, and is a bit of a nuisance because it's time-consuming, because Really, this seaplane isn't very fast, but if it's like your first time playing, then it's kind of nice to do a mission like this, where you don't have a whole lot of action going on, and the sights of Vice City West can really sink into your mind, and it leads to a kind of nice experience, so... I don't know, you can take that how you will, but that's just my two cents there. And something I want to talk about, because there's not a whole lot else to talk about for this mission, is an idea that I've thought about even before doing this uh, mission strand for the film studio, and it's like, it's based off of this thing that I like doing in my spare time, which is reading Wikipedia pages on, like, famous people, or athletes, for example, and you tend to get chain reactions involved to where you begin reading about a specific athlete, and then maybe you wander off in Wikipedia land, and start reading about historical athletes and then events that have gone on in whatever sport you're reading about for these athletes and stuff like that and it leads to a kind of fun and enjoyable experience um, even though it's all incredibly useless information but it's fun in its own way and I want to relate this to this idea in that I want to know the thought process behind a lot of these women entering the porn industry it's like it, obviously porn has worked out for someone like Jenna Jameson or Sasha Gray to be a bit more modern and speaking of I really hate her scenes but her appeal is that she's loud she's obnoxious she swears even worse than a sailor she shoves a ton of hot dogs and sausages into her private parts and it really doesn't do it for me I'm more of a vanilla man but it's like that is her thing and I want to know why in her mind when she began in the industry and even before that like when she was thinking about doing pornography and stuff it's like what was the thought process to to her saying that that is going to be my thing right there like i just want to know the events that led up in their life like influences and stuff and just everything i mean i know it's going to be different from woman to woman but it's just something that 
kind of interests me a little bit. And when I'm all zipped up, I kind of think about sometimes. So, I don't know, there's my, there's my little rant and spiel there and all that. So, anyways, that completes this part. In the next part, we'll be doing the mission called Martha's Mugshot. So until then, I will see you next time.